Are you looking to travel to Antarctica in total comfort, or even to the Great Lakes or remote destinations in between? Well, a Viking Expedition Cruise may be one of the best options for you. I'm your host Jason Leppard, and this is Popular Cruising's review of Viking Polaris, touring the ship deck by deck, extensively showcasing its Antarctic expeditions, and concluding with our pros and cons. First starting up high and then working our way down from deck 6 is a wide open deck space. We're on a beautiful sunny day in Antarctica, the ever-friendly crew surprised us with an al fresco barbecue. And when Viking does a barbecue, the line goes all out with an incredible spread of not just all the surf, lobster tail included, but also bone marrow, corn on the cob, and porterhouse steaks. Yes siree! And once more during our cruise, they did it all over again, but this time with burgers. Massive one pound burgers, that is. Intended to share, but I honestly devoured this bad boy myself. There is one brief negative on this open deck, however, and that's the location of the ship's smoking area is unfortunately positioned upwind of the rest. Descending to deck 5 of the stern are the pools. With loungers and one main pool inside under a macrodome enclosure. That neatly extends underneath to the outside. With an infinity style edge. And both a colder plunge pool to one side. And another warmer one to the other. When the weather is right, it's just the perfect spot to take in the passing scenery, especially from the hottest of the three pools. Meanwhile, a promenade deck wraps around the majority of the ship on this level for even more excellent sightseeing real estate. Just inside and off from the pools is the Aquavit Terrace Bar, which unless you have the inclusive Silver Spirits package is an extra charge for drinks, from Viking's marvelous smiley servers. Attached and just forward is the World Cafe, the ship's casual self-service buffet that besides the usual offerings, which are typically the same as offered in the full-service restaurant below for an alternative, extends to a steakhouse station. Here's where you can get my favorite Pancho Villa burger at lunch, or a whole butcher's shop's worth of prime cuts, as well as grilled lobster tails and all the toppings. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when all our latest videos are posted. Once again, the result is a magnificent surf and turf for dinner. On the other side is yet another included station for sushi and shellfish. Like freshly prepared delicious rolls and of course Viking signature all-you-can-eat crab already cut open for you. Moving farther forward is this side salad bar and buffet lineup. Seen here showcasing a super extensive seafood theme that was offered once midday during our cruise, which amounts to just a small portion of the wide variety of choices you can enjoy here. Extending even beyond to a bakery and dessert station, including an occasional chocolate theme. And I have to point out what was my favorite Linzer tort. Mm. In addition to the chocolate fondue and ice cream bar, where after choosing your flavor and toppings, they can all be mixed in atop a cold stone-like surface to then be rolled up and finished with sweet syrups in a bowl. Remarkably, in addition to the World Cafe is also Momsens, the ship's Norwegian deli named after founder Torstein Hagen's mother, and another casual eatery for quickly grabbing snacks throughout the day ranging from the venue's internationally known waffles, hearty pea soup, and a tempting selection of waffle-like cookies, cakes, and pies, all of which are included. Stretching forward into the other side of the ship is the living room and the library. Really, the entire ship is a library, with books to peruse seemingly wherever you turn. And here's one spot where you can listen to lovely live piano music. Of course, there's also an extra bar here to service it all. On any other cruise ship, these plentiful wraparound windows would be enough to consider this a dedicated observation lounge. But it's really just a whole other addition that is always inviting, and is a great spot for reading, doing puzzles, playing games, or simply relaxing. Just in front, of course, is the ship's actual observation lounge, or really I should say the first of its two levels, which extend outside conveniently to the promenade deck to take in the wildlife when bundled up, like these awesome humpback whales that first welcomed us to Antarctica. 
before heading back inside to take shelter from the snow, which is something you surely don't see every day in an observation lounge, especially in the Caribbean. And also on deck four, the Double Decker Explorer's Lounge only continues with another bar, dubbed Paps for Hagen's father this time around, where guests can also catch more live music from a talented guitarist with a delightful repertoire that covered more than just the hits, and a lovely pianist once more. And that's all in the presence of a set of seriously cozy furnishings. Also from here, we caught a glimpse of a very unique rendezvous with not only one of Viking's larger ocean ships, the Viking Jupiter, but also Polaris's Viking Octantis sister ship in Ushuaia, Argentina. With Octantis continuing to maneuver outside our Nordic balcony, Deck 4 was also where our wonderful Nordic penthouse accommodations were located. And you better believe these comfortable beds are teddy bear approved, as is naturally the sofa. With a window that mechanically opens down to a railing, this seating area is effectively in place of a traditional balcony, with floor-to-ceiling vistas either inside or out. Plus, a vanity desk features Viking's usual accoutrements, such as quiet box listening devices and the first of the cabin's many USB charging ports and other electrical outlets. And the vanity further lifts up to store a brightly lit mirror, as well as makeup and other beauty products. Storage is altogether outstanding in these rooms, with binoculars to use during the trip, even more books, and a globe available on multiple shelves, and additional nooks and crannies that all open for bonus spots to tuck things away. And also bedside are more US and European outlets, regular USB and USB charging ports, and even surface induction charging. And among many closets, and I do mean many, is one behind sliding doors, as well as Vikings expedition only drying closets, replacing wet boots, jackets, and more. Across from the foot of the bed is the room's flat panel TV with a large set of free on-demand films and shows, and yet another counter and set of multiple drawers. Plus, there's a mini bar pantry complete with integrated and daily stocked mini fridge, a coffee maker, and more shelving. And that's all in addition to a whole other full secondary closet for even more hanging space. Meanwhile, the bathroom is just as perfect for being well padded at the sink and toilet, and especially at the oversized shower with shaving ledge and a high pressure spray wand. Included Freya toiletries are very nice for shampoo, conditioner, body wash, lotion and soap bars, and further extend a bonus hand cream, sunscreen, and lip balm on Antarctic sailings. Viking has thought of literally everything, including room service, which sadly isn't quite as extensive as on the line's other ocean ships, but will deliver non-listed pizza upon request. But the best of the best is just opening the curtains and Nordic balcony to views like this every day. For comparison's sake, other accommodations that are available on Polaris are the bigger Nordic Junior Suite, essentially a wider version of the Nordic balcony. Larger overall, though, are 548 square foot Explorer Suites, not to mention the 1,238 square foot Owner Suite. When you're ready to book your Viking Polaris voyage, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, click on the link right here, or call the phone number or message the email address below. Then heading down to Deck 3 is mostly more staterooms and the upper level of the Ala, which we will soon share, as well as the shelter and the bow, both of which are outside, but the former provides a thoughtful temporary refuge in between venturing out to the exposed bow itself where breathtaking views are otherwise uninterrupted, save for the rain and other elements. Centrally located is also the Travel Consultant's Office, a handsome space where passengers can book future cruise sales and take a gander at these builders-grade models of Viking's other ocean vessels, submarines, and expedition ships themselves. And across the way is the ship's singular shop, which offers a fine selection of clothing and logo items, a few sundries, and even the occasional stuffed animal. In fact, I adopted this very penguin. Deck 2 again consists of many cabins, as well as Expedition Central and the studio. These are prime spots to interact with the expedition staff throughout the cruise, where they will delve further into the biological and geological sciences of the region on one side, including a computer and massive wall monitor for further illustrations and mapping. And on the other side, passing the architecturally marvelous, structurally exposed atrium, is the studio with a complimentary coffee bar, conference style seating, and a neat birdwatcher friendly, life-size plush animal display of the regional birds to spot in the wild. Down the hall is another of Viking's excellent venues in the form of the Nordic Spa, Fitness Center, and Salon. 
the gym area is actually quite expansive, with a separate motion studio, and multiple pieces of techno gym exercise equipment. And the salon next door is a convenient place to get hair trims, and more is needed. But the creme de la creme on board is the complimentary thermal suite, including the sublime hydrotherapy pool that is even better placed here than on Viking's other ocean ships, given its unbelievable view. As well as welcoming heated tile loungers behind a faux fireplace. The only thing here that costs extra are treatments themselves that are available off this adjacent relaxation room for full body massages and the like. Otherwise free are also the cold water bucket, multiple spray experience shower, and even a snow room with flurries and all. The Nordic bathing concept is to alternate between hot and cold environments to encourage greater circulation, extending also to a separate steam room and also dry sauna. One that has a view to the outside as well as an additional open air hot tub. This one is a real treat to be in the heated waters among views such as these. The aforementioned Ala is located off the Blue Room Lobby with another coffee station and stuffed bird display, mind you synthetic, not real, before passing into the Double Decker Theater and Lecture Hall with its own wraparound windows and massive screen that can pull down from the ceiling. Unfortunately on our ceiling I never did see it tucked out of the way to get the full view here during the day, but the surface and its artful curtains are ideal for screenings. There are no stage performances here, but movies like Top Gun Maverick are scheduled. Once the curtains are drawn, daily briefings are also held in the Alla by the expedition staff, and in particular Viking's excellent expedition leader. I honestly can't say enough good things about this team, who went so far as to be present every 10 feet or so to help guests with a steady hand as they stepped out of Zodiacs on any particularly challenging landing. Besides interactions with the staff at Expedition Central, here is where interesting lectures on various regional topics are also presented. And it's fascinating to see outside from time to time to get a glimpse of the beautifully snowy conditions at the Finsa Terrace. It can often be wet back here, but boy does it offer some of the best views on board, especially when passing through the narrowest of channels. And on a dry sunny day, it's definitely the place to be as the Ala looks on to sheltered fire pits and other seating, all with great stern vistas. Just below it on deck one is the science lab. Originally, this was offered as something guests could visit and participate in helping to count microplastics filtered out of local waters. But since passengers weren't particularly accurate gathering such statistics, and it took away time from actual science, it's a program that is no longer offered. Instead, the ship features the line scientific partnerships and has the staff elsewhere demonstrate the science they perform below decks. Regularly collecting samples and measuring sea pollutants to better understand environmental impacts. Surely more appetizing on deck one, though, is the restaurant. For full-service dinners, this venue is top-notch. What with views like these just beyond the tables. To enjoy the likes of a refreshing crab cake with avocado and oranges, creamy leeks and potato soup with cheese toast, no less, classic Caesar salad, excellent homemade ricotta and pecorino tortellini, succulent spiny lobster, and a sweet mango send-off. Nestled in between the ship's primary sit-down venues is even a private dining room that can be reserved for larger groups, housed within wine storage that can also serve as a conference room as needed. And opposite the restaurant is Manfredi's, ensuring Vikings expedition ships have great Italian cuisine just as on its larger ocean vessels. As such, the atmosphere will be familiar to any guests who have sailed before, as will delicious items after visiting several times, like a wonderful bread service with olive oil, vinegar, and parmesan bites, fried calamari, perfect beef carpaccio, marvelous gorgonzola gnocchi, a great bolognese lasagna that I tried for the first time, yet even more lobster, this time as a pasta, lemony veal scallopini, table side prepared Dover sole, and my still all-time fave, Bisteca Fiorentina. Outside the restaurants, at the lower atrium, is another bar for cocktails and other pre- or post-dinner drinks, among even more comfortable seating. 
And on the other side is the Explorer's Desk for guest services, which is much more inviting on Viking thanks to desks to sit at instead of stand. Lastly on Deck 1 might be my single favorite venue at sea. The hide is just that, a hidden, speakeasy-esque secondary observation lounge nestled within the bow. Another faux fireplace and leather chairs make for a cozy cabin-like atmosphere with genuine expedition gear on display. Extra cost sipping alcohol at the ready to be poured in the evening. And of course, these marvelous seats overlooking windows nearly at sea level for taking in calm waters as well as rough ones from a very cool vantage point. And Deck A is all about expeditions, with the hangar being the ship's massive garage for housing all of the equipment that can be maneuvered easily with overhead gantry cranes, such as special operations boats, which can even load from here for those who are less mobile, zodiacs, kayaks where they are demonstrated and guests tested for getting in and out of from pontoon boats, and yes, a pair of yellow submarines. The only downside to offering the subs for free and first come first served is that it makes them extremely difficult to snag a booking for. Even the regularly available Zodiac cruises and landings were plenty sufficient for me to fully enjoy Antarctica. We even had to have everything we planned to take ashore inspected and cleaned for biosecurity, my Viking Eric Plush included. Despite cubbies that would appear as prep areas, they're really just for show, as guests are invited to don their gear before arriving and queuing up for a pontoon boat. Off we were on our very first Antarctic excursion an introductory bay cruise in the snow. Among lots of floating ice, it really was the best primer to Antarctica and its wild environment. But it was just one of many included expeditions we enjoyed during our sailing. After first arriving in Ushuaia, Argentina, considered the world's most southerly city, its share of shipwrecks included, then boarding our much more capable and seaworthy vessel. The day following our brief Zodiac preview of Antarctica, we arrived at Peterman Island for our first landing and it sure was a doozy, as an introduction to the region's famed penguin populations. Suffice it to say, they are absolutely adorable, and they really are everywhere, ensuring up close and personal encounters, albeit not too close for their sake. I genuinely wanted to hug and adopt every one of these critters. But alas, that was not possible beyond my plush version back on board. Perhaps the cutest penguin behavior, besides their signature arms back forward waddle that is, is their penchant for falling on their bellies and scooting along as though they were swimming on the surface. I mean, how precious is that? It was also always interesting checking out the few man-made structures that periodically dotted the landscape, as illustrations of just how tough it would be to overnight in such an environment. Of course, these guys know how. When Crystal Bay we visited, Apparently I'm Yoda now speaking in reverse syntax. When Crystal Bay we visited. <laughs> the lighting on the water was indeed crystalline and made for the perfect setting to see more humpback whales, as several showed their tails, with just a stunning background behind. As you would expect, this was the best day for enjoying the Finsa Terrace at the stern, too. Detail Island would usually be another landing site, but house-sized icebergs have blocked the beach. It's a good reminder that the itinerary that is outlined is only penciled in as a potential template the ship will follow. Everything in Antarctica is at the mercy of the weather, and expedition plans must be nimble to adjust accordingly. There are also moments of stellar scenic sailing as well, as we watch the dramatic landscape of Antarctica simply pass by our window. We were constantly mesmerized as the Paramount logo seemed to emerge in our frame. Sand stars, of course. You gotta imagine those. Plus, always incredible ice flows and massive icebergs many of which were sculptural in nature. Pay no attention to the competition here, other than to get a sense of the enormous scale of Lemire Channel. Again with a warm whale welcome as we entered. With enormous mountains on either side, and tight clearances in between. Antarctica really is like Alaska on steroids. And as before, the Finsa Terrace was one of our favorite spots to see it all pass behind us.
Des Moines Point was yet another one of our marvelous landing sites. With vibrant structures contrasting against the white snowpack. And our penguin friends were back to greet us. By the way, Antarctica is very cold, but it was not as cold as I thought it would be. Temperatures shown on weather apps must take a super chilly average of the entire continent, because what we experienced was similar to, albeit a bit colder than, Alaska in, say, the likes of Glacier Bay or at the face of Hubbard Glacier. In fact, there were times we found ourselves sweating under all the parka layers. These guys, after all, go all natural. But I would never suggest so few closer visitors unless partaking in a polar plunge. But note, Viking does not offer that particular experience. And I was always glad to return to the ship and know we didn't have to camp out overnight here. Speaking of polar plunges, I've done it before in Alaska, but I'll leave it to these guys to hop in the water here. Another fun experience available only on Viking are cruises on a pair of special operations boats, allowing passengers to see a larger area in a shorter period of time, including getting near some of the huge icebergs to spot crab eater seals perched above, or passing by the famed Penguin Post Office. These vessels really do offer a very unique water level perspective of the landscape, all before returning to the ship. The final stop on our trip was Coverville Island, where we passed through a stunning field of icebergs, whilst penguins behaved like dolphins, playfully porpoising out of the water before reaching shore themselves. We were always amused too at how they seemed to prefer taking a stroll with a buddy. Here there were a ton of so-called penguin highways, and they curiously crossed our paths as well. Simply totes adorbs, am I right? We also found it hilarious how even though penguins live here, they look just as unsure of their footing as we were. Soon it was time to take all the toys back in, kayaks included, as we returned to our ship and got one last look at the hangar, collecting all the vessels and gear. Until the next time we visit Antarctica aboard the splendid Viking Polaris. And now for our concluding pros and cons. What we disliked is pains in the aft are really far and few between but includes the smoking area that is upwind from Open Deck 6, the reduced room service selection compared to Viking's other ocean ships, and the fact that it's really quite difficult to secure a spot on the submarines. But what we most liked, and can definitely take a bow, are Polaris's outstanding overall ship design, great expedition options that are conducive to all activity levels, and the line's impressive inclusions, both onboard and off. Thanks so much for watching! If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.